Hi everyone, welcome to Live Darts. We're Dan in Hastings and we've got Conan right with us. Conan, congratulations on what's been a successful last few weeks for yourself. Yeah, thank you very much. Enjoyed it. I say, you went to Wigan, got your tour card, how did that feel? Uh, it was the second time I tried to get the tour card. I was actually second time picking up one as well, but it's great to be back in the PDC now. I say, you followed that up as well, um, Lakeside quarterfinals. Happy with a quarterfinal, but also disappointed not to go further? Oh, I'm majorly disappointed because the way I was playing, I think I could have gone a lot further. But I mean, cracking result in the second round, I think, against Mark. Yeah. But, but yeah, really happy with the result. I say, obviously, we follow the darts a lot and we know how well you were playing, but going into Lakeside, you weren't really talked about by a lot of people. No, I mean, I was I had laid off the BDO tour for the last two months. Yeah, I played in the Finders, did a white in that, I lost to Glenda Rant in that. Yeah. And then uh, I've literally kept quiet for the last couple of months. Didn't bother entering him because I knew I was going to go Q school anyway. So I thought I'd lay off all the BDO. There was no point in going and wasting money picking up ranking points. I knew I was in Lakeside. So I was just practicing behind the scenes. I didn't really see anyone at all. When did you make your mind up you were going to Q school? Uh, I'd say about a week after Des lifted the ban. Because then once he'd lifted the ban, it was all, all, all no, old, no old spot really. Cause I weren't going to lose my lakeside money, so it was there and then I decided, well, I'm going to have another crack at the PDC. If the ban had still been in place, I'm just playing with Davis Advocate here, would that decision have to have been made after Lakeside then? I wouldn't say after Lakeside, I'd say but closer to Lakeside, because it was really cut, coming to the cut-off point. But it was literally all dependent on how I played at Lakeside. That's fair enough, as I say, because obviously I know we've spoken to a lot of BDO players last year, and then before the ban, and their lives were just up in the air, not knowing what was going on. So yeah. Des come in, and I think he did a really smart thing, just for darts in general. Yeah. yeah, it was a smart thing. I mean, he's not just opened up the BDO, but he's allowed the PDC players that don't hold a tour card to come back as well. So I think he's attracted a few more players back to the BDO. Yeah, you touched on that as well, like the likes of Andy Hamilton and Wes Newton coming back and playing really well yeah. on the BDO, so we've done the world of good. Yeah, it's done well. Both made like side, so within I think it was six months they made it. Well, Wes just about got in on the yeah. because of the technicality, but yeah, Andy was pretty much guaranteed from midway through the season. Yeah, he was he's quality anyway, but he's, he, he just didn't turn up at Lakeside. Expecting a lot more out of him. Obviously, what did you think of Lakeside this year? Do you think it was a success considering even as players and I say media, we didn't know what was going on until very late with Lakeside. Was that tough not knowing where uh, it was going to be as well? To be fair, he was in the same boat as us, to be honest. <laughs> we didn't really know what was going on until right at the last minute. But yeah, I think it was more, I think it was most successful Lakeside they've had for a long time. Especially when they released the tickets, like to the uh, counties for free, that filled the place up. There's a lot better atmosphere than it has been the last two years. Right. So, back with the PDC, going to take you all the way back, mate. 2013 UK Open was your first PDC tournament. Yeah. Can you still remember it? What, beating Shelton, I don't, I'll never forget that. <laughs> no, knocking out one of the favourites for the comp first round. I mean, it was a scrappy game. I've watched it a couple of times back. It weren't a great game, but dark squads went in my favour that day. I was going to say as well, now, now you've got your tour card, you're guaranteed to go back to the UK Open as well because yeah. you haven't got to qualify for it. Is that a relief, knowing that you haven't your first TV major, you will be there? Yeah, I, to be fair, I'm not going to lie, I didn't even know that I'd qualify for the UK Open just by getting the tour card. I thought we still had to do the UK qualifiers like we, like, like we did before. Yeah. I wasn't even aware of that until, until Tom said, oh, you guaranteed UK Open. And I was like, what, really? <laughs> no, yeah, it's a, it's a massive bonus. It's, it's a major straight away. As well, have you set yourself any targets where you want to be in the early part of 2019? Uh, yeah, I want to be Baldwin on top 64, if not in the top 64. So it takes a lot of pressure off next year where I'm starting afresh now and I haven't got to sort of retain money to keep my spot. So if I'm Baldwin in the 64, I'm quite happy with that. Again, the two ranking systems are very different from PDC and the BDO. Players are very subconscious of what they're defending at all times and already you've talked about it, yeah. getting that top 64. Is that a must for any dark player now, that, that holy ground of the top 64? Yeah, because, I mean, to be honest, no one wants to go back to Q School. Such a horrible four days, my arms are killing, it's worry the whole four days you're there, and it's just, it's painful, Q School is painful. Was that the toughest dying experience of your career today, those four days in Q School? It's the toughest, I'd say the most enduring. It's the most enduring four days I've ever done. 
I wouldn't say it was the toughest. I mean, it's, it's going to be tough anyway, but any, any game you play, it's tough. But the toughest time I ever had was when I was in PDC two years ago, because I started from the bottom. And I was pretty green to it back then, but where I've got a lot more experience now in the BDO, I'm going back into this, this PDC Pro Tour now with a lot more experience. So I was quite comfortable at Q Squad, so. Obviously, you qualified through the Order of Merit. Going into that last day, what was going through your head? Because I think we're all aware that you didn't need to win the event on the last day. No. You, you, it was a case of needed maybe one or two points just, just to cement yeah. that place. Was that a tough mindset, knowing that you didn't have to win the tournament? No, because uh, when you play, you just switch off anyway. You don't think about the game after the game you play, and you think about the game in hand at the time. And that's probably harder to get through that one than it was the next one. And If you're thinking ahead of yourself, you're going to lose the game you're playing there and then. As well, you touched about maybe you're a bit green the first time you're in the PDC. Yep. Do you think too many players go across too early when they're not maybe not ready to go across? No, I wouldn't say they wasn't ready, because if they wasn't ready, they wouldn't, be, they wouldn't get through Cusco. So it's more of a fact of being in awe of the players. Because when you're the new boy, no one knows you, no one fears you, you fear everybody. But now it's completely different. There's not one player I fear at the minute, so it's just going in there, I'm there to win it, I'm not there to just make the numbers up this time. Are you relishing the chance to play your Gary Anderson, your Michael Van Goens? They're only another player to be honest. There's only another man on the board, they're all human. <laughs> As well, the BDO ladies, a special mention to them, they went to Q School and Ali Pally, Lisa, Anastasia, Fallon, I could go on, Lorraine, all did an absolutely amazing job. Well, it's quality. I mean, you've got to take it out to the PDC for giving them a go. And I think they've actually proved that they can actually play with the men. Do you think it's only a matter of time till we see a lady with the, the holy grail of a tour card? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> for the simple reason, I wouldn't like to play a lady. Because <laughs> you're under pressure straight away. It's, it's not nice playing a woman because everyone's expecting you to win. But what you don't realise is when you're playing players of that colour, in your own edge, you're not expected to win because they're as good as us. What we've seen on the county averages, we've seen Lisa and, and that going average well over 100 playing. Oh, playing she, she's immense. I wouldn't like to play Lisa in form. <laughs> Conan, thanks very much for joining us. Dan here Hastings, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you and all the very best. For thank you very much. I appreciate that. Cheers, thank, mate. You. thank you very Cheers. much. Thank you.